Welcome to Student Short Films, once again coming to you from Confederation College in Thunder Bay, Ontario. Tonight's episode is going to be all about music in student films. This is often something uh, much like costuming or makeup is overlooked, and that's uh, you do that to your detriment because music is very important. Um, first of all, never, ever, ever use somebody else's music, for example, Metallica or some other well-known band, or even an unknown band, without their permission. Um, people catch this right away, it looks unprofessional, uh, it looks lazy. Um, now if you get the permission of some well-known band, that's great, go ahead and use it. So if Metallica says, sure, you can use one in your student short film, that's fine, just be sure to credit them and make sure you have written permission because some crackerjack lawyer somewhere down the line might sue you if you uh, win a contest, for example, or a film festival with that film. So, uh, tonight we will watch a few shorts that have uh, music or interesting musicians in them. So, for example, our first one is called Deception, and it stars Cheyenne Havorka, who is a uh, famous Canadian musician. Um, uh, and then after we watch Deception, we'll come back and we'll talk to one of the student filmmakers who also does a lot of scoring here, Lenny Carpenter. So here is Deception. was a great police officer. Come on, son, that's what we do. Dad, I'm getting tired. I don't know what happened. It was an accident. all right. That's good. I guess I didn't know how hard I was hitting the ball. He said he was tired. I pushed him. Well, it's okay. He's all right. And I'm sure you concentrated a little bit on how hard you're hitting him. Oh, come on. Don't leave. Let's talk. Did you want to catch a movie? Um, like, do you have any plans or anything? No, I'm sorry. I can't. I have a lunch date. How was the gym? That was actually pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. Well, I'll tell Charles I said hi. Yeah, I'll tell him for sure. Oh, Sandra noticed I was a little distracted today. Really? Yeah. How was your day? Oh, it was really good. Did you go out? No, no. I just stayed home and tidied the house, and um, and uh, well, I skipped my workout today. And uh, we were out of coffee and I was going to go get some, but I decided not to do that. But then Karen came over and she brought Aiden over to her house to play with Curtis. Hmm. Don't worry, we're taking care of everything. All right, welcome back. And now we're going to talk with Lenny Carpenter all about making music in student films. So, Lenny, yep. tell us all about it. <laughs> well, uh, basically, um, 
Well, I guess I should start with how I got into music. I was 16 and I started playing guitar. Mm -hmm. And my primary influence are, uh, well, like thrash metal, the 80s, uh, a lot of classic rock. So it's from there that I got into music. And um, it, it was through learning guitar that I, I grew to understand music theory. And um, so what I would do is, because uh, I was always trying to get an understanding of like how music comes together, how it the uh, melodies uh, come together and how they interact with chords and things underneath. So um, so what I would do is uh, I would dissect some of my favorite songs. I read up on music theory, uh, I looked up scales, and, um, and then I would basically uh, teach, I basically taught myself through um, how music works. And uh, at the time I didn't really write my own music, I was just, you know, playing along to my favorites. And um, and it, it's only until basically I got here that I've um, really started to seriously consider like composing. Yeah. So when um, explain to to those of us who don't know or to those who are may, maybe only hazily aware what goes into so say somebody brings you a finished film, right? What do you do then? Well, what I like to do is um, I'll sit down with the director, mm -hmm. and we'll go through. Uh, the film together and I'll usually have him or her um, go through some of the beats, uh, go through the scenes and just I the most important thing I think is uh, like trying to convey what mood or motion that they're looking for and um, what kind of makes this interesting from other types of music uh, is that you know in music there's a lot of uh, like in a rock uh, song for instance you know there'll be a main guitar riff and that'll repeat throughout and the riff might change from like verse to chorus, mm -hmm. but you know it's repetitive. But whereas in a film, uh, because you got a very specific scene, a very specific uh, unlimited time frame, so the music has to kind of um, be very unique to that scene and try to match um, the the director's vision. And it, the mood can change drastically, like throughout you know one scene. So I think that's one of the more challenging aspects of scoring for film as compared to, uh, you know, writing a, a rock song or something, just because you got all these possibilities. So you, you sit down with the director and then do you score through most of it and then have the director come back in to check it out or? Yeah, I give them updates. I mean, it's kind of hard when I'm um, to have a lot done in a, you know, given I'm trying to work on my own film, you know, I got my school assignments and the personal life and all that. So, um, and because I, it's still relatively new to me, that it's probably more time consuming to then say somebody who's done it for a couple of years. So uh, it does take some time, um, but yeah, I just, uh, I just have them tell me, uh, you know, there's emotion, but also they have specific ideas as well uh, in terms of uh, instrumentation. Uh, mostly they tell me, they give me an example, like they, there's this uh, specific song from one of their favorite films or something that they want me to kind of emulate. No, though I'm fine with directions like that, it's just I, I need a more specific to tailor it toward their film. So that's why I have them uh, go through the um, emotions and the mood that they want. Mm -hmm. And since you're also a filmmaker, when you're in pre-production on a film, do you go ahead and are you already in your mind putting music to scenes? No, actually, uh, just because I'm trying to worry about like you know lighting and camera stuff and about getting the performances that I want, I'm just focusing on that. Uh, music is kind of an afterthought. I, I I just got my film back today and I, I'm still not sure what direction I want to take the music because there's again there's so many possibilities because you got. Um, all kinds of instruments, because it's not only the melodies that, when you think of music, you try to think of like, uh, you know, beats and melodies, but there's all kinds of possibilities with the instruments uh, and how you structure and arrange them. Um, when they come in, when they go out, if uh, even the instrument itself will have different possibilities, whether they can swell or, or they can play one note really fast or, and you know, just all this stuff. So I haven't really, uh, sat down to really think of how it's going to sound for my film but I'm just hoping that once I cut it together and uh, get the scenes uh, cut the way I want then hopefully that I'll have a better idea of it by then. 
Oh, okay. Uh, so, say you finished editing uh, your film, yeah. and you decide, well, I've, I've, I've come up with this great uh, music for this, this area here, or this scene, but this, it would actually work better if the scene was a little longer. Would you go back and maybe re-edit to add more music in, or do you think that, that it's best to just leave the edits? Uh, I think I would um, definitely thought about that, and yeah, I definitely would factor into editing as well. In fact, um, even in another director's film where I was composing the music, uh, he had this bit where he wanted to build up the intensity to, there was this kind of uh, standoff type of thing. And um, when I was trying to compose for it to lead up to one specific point, uh, the editing I felt didn't really match. Uh, with what the, where I was trying to take the music, so I asked him. I said it would probably, if before he pulls out this gun or whatever, it would probably be better to, uh, if you cut to this shot, so that way when we cut back to this shot, I'll ha I can end that specific note, and it would work better for the scene. And I believe that's what uh, he's actually done to help to help with the the music for that scene. Um, when you watch. Uh, professional films, for example, yeah. are there some that you're just pained by the um, lack of effort they may have put into the the scoring? Not really, no. Um, I don't really notice the music un unless I deliberately think, okay, think about the music. Uh, there are some times where it kind of stands out, like in a good way, where I go, wow, that sounds really good, and then I start paying attention to it. Like, for instance, uh, The Social Network, I felt... Um, had a really great original score because it wasn't necessarily orchestral, but they had introduced some uh, electronic type of instruments in it. Yeah, didn't, just, didn't Trent Reznor just win the Academy Award for that last night? Yeah, I think he did. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so so there's that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and um, uh, how to phrase this question? So when you're approaching a scene, what is the I guess the creative process that goes through, do you watch it and do you just get a feeling as to how the music should be or do you kind of approach it more clinically and think, well, I can do this or I could do this and then just try and see what fits best? Yeah, I, I sit through it and I, uh, I view the film and I, I'm sitting at the computer with uh, by the MIDI keyboard so I have, and then yeah, I try out different things um, I think of melodies, because I have this knowledge of music theory, I think, okay, it should sound like this, Team, these two notes should sound good together. And, uh, and you know, just try to see if it fits with the picture. That's typically uh, been my approach. Um, so yeah, that's how I go about doing that. And how about the um, facilities here at uh, Confederation College? Uh, how are they uh, geared towards enabling the scoring best? Oh, I think it's... Um, I think they've uh, added equipment recently that's able to uh, facilitate the um, uh, music making for the films. Uh, we have a software program called Logic Pro that I believe was just introduced last year or this year uh, that has like a catalog of all these uh, software instruments. Mm -hmm. And uh, he added these, um, these MIDI keyboards so that uh, you can you know, basically play these software instruments on the computer. And, because last year all I had was uh, I could just record a mic to my guitar and also there is this uh, actual physical keyboard that has these uh, other effects like it had a violin and a piano and typical keyboard effects but it was very limited but this year it seems to have uh, because of the Logic Pro it's, you know, there's more possibilities. Okay. okay. Um, well thanks so much for coming on and telling us all about music in nice. student films. Appreciate you being here. Nice. All right, and next up to continue our theme of music, we're going to check out one called Checkmate by Jessica Graham. Uh, this is more the traditional type of film you would think of when you think music because it's a sort of a sad, serious drama about a family dealing with the effects of Alzheimer's. So here is Checkmate.
I can't believe you're still beating me at your age, Dad. <laughs> well, I might forget my postal code sometimes, but by gosh, Nick, I can always beat you at this game. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. I'm going to tell you something. The good thing about having dementia, do you know what that is? What's that? <laughs> I can hide my own Easter eggs. <laughs> You have a phone call. Marty, why don't we get you ready for lunch? Oh, uh, I've had lunch already. No, not yet today, Marty. Here, let's go sit down, and Nick will meet us there. Hello? Hi, how's Dad? He's, he didn't know who I was again this morning. It's getting harder to make him understand. He's getting worse, Claire. Can you? Can you make it down this weekend? But I'd have to bring... He's never met. I'll be there on Thursday. Friday at the latest. You should get back to Dad. I'll see you soon. Bye. What's this? Things. Whose things? Oh, the damn nurses are stealing all my stuff. My, my glasses went missing this morning, you know. Here, I'll take these. Thank you. Marty? Checkmate. Good game. You tried. You know, you remind me a bit of my son. Do I? What's he like? He's about your age, actually. Uh, he works at the paper. I've got a daughter. I have a daughter, too, but I haven't seen them in years. Where, where am I? What? Why did you put me in here? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's all right now. He's back in his room. Maybe you should go for today. But... Here, I can take this to him tomorrow. Maybe you should go home and rest. You don't live here, you know. Come on. <laughs> well, you finally beat me. You should be excited. I'm not a sore loser. Who's your friend, Dad? Her name is Mary. She doesn't fly very much, so they said I can keep her. Is he up? Can we see him? He's up. He's worse than before. He barely knew me this morning, and he probably won't know you. It, you can see him, but when he tries to remember, it, it's scary for him. Well, what did the doctor say? Is he eating anything? When are visiting hours over? Claire? Why aren't you answering me? Claire! <sighs> They're taking good care of him. I've been here for a few weeks now. I like your duck, it's very yellow. Well, I like your sweater. It's my favorite. I've been wearing it for three days now. Do you live here? I think so. Why are you here? 
I'm here to see my grandpa. How deep is a frog's pond? Knee deep, knee deep. <laughs> Don't run away again like that. Do you understand me? Hello? I'm Claire. You're Marty, right? Yeah. Nice to meet you. Does Mom know him? Yeah. From a long time ago. He was nice. And who's this? This is Mary. I have a granddaughter in Canada I, I haven't met, and she just loves animals just like I do. So I thought it would fit. Hello? All right, and finally tonight, uh, our, we have the aptly named The Last Sonata by Shane Gardner. Um, this one makes use of juicer for music. Uh, and I'd like to thank everyone here at Confederation College for their hospitality once again. So here is The Last Sonata. Come in. So what can I do for you, James? I want out. Excuse me? I want out. What exactly do you mean, you want out? Look, Frank, I can't live this lifestyle no more. I'm done. Okay, what kind of lifestyle do you intend to live? One with my family. Who do you think is gonna hire an ex-con like you? Your father was a good man. But my family is more important. I'm your family! No, you are not. Hey, good look. What? What? I'm out, I'm done. No. Yeah, what about Frank? Ah, uh, Frank will be pissed for a few weeks. Come on now, I used to know his father. He'll get over it. Besides, it's more like me on the back burner. Are you sure? Yes, dear. Well then, I guess this is called for celebration. Let's go out, just the two of us. Really? What about Jess? Honey, the girl is 16. What's the worst thing that could happen if we left her alone? All right. You go get ready. Wait for my call. They eliminate everyone. No witnesses. Fancy. It's a celebration. Where'd you learn to tie tie? Shut up. Okay, okay. James, let's go. We have reservations. Thanks, sweetie. James! Joe. Coming, coming. Jessica, do not put the stove on and don't play the piano. I just had it tuned. Yes, Mom. Hey. No boys.
James! James! What the hell are you doing? What I should have done. Will you just let the police handle it? He owns the police. I've already lost Jess, and I can't lose you too. It's my fault! I know you think the same thing. I can see it in your eyes every time you look at me. I have to do this. You know what? Do it. I don't care anymore.